Hi, this is model shipwright Steve Prisky, and this is part two of building the tall ship model Puaco. Now, as was explained in part one, a sugar ship was uh, one of the ships that helped start the CNH sugar business, and this fleet of tall ships was operated by a company called Hind and Rolf. And these gentlemen operated out of San Francisco. Most of their built uh, ships were built either on the Bay Area or up and down the West Coast. Uh, amazingly, uh, I found that all of the ships built in this fleet were nearly identical. All of them were four-masted, and about half of the ships in the fleet, there were 25 ships in total, about half the ships in the fleet were four-masted barkentines. The rest of them were four-masted schooners. Well, here we're going to be looking at the completed chain plates that have been installed on the port side of the ship model of the Puaco 2. And there's a photograph of the real ship, and here's another photograph of the real ship where we can get a look at those chain plates along the side of the ship. And here we see them on the port side of the model. I'm going to be uh, marking off where the waterline tape has been placed and then removing the waterline tape so that we can better sand away any of the glue signs where the chain plates have been adhered to the hull. And then reattaching the uh, waterline tape and painting the hall. Now here I'm showing the completion of the shrouds on the foremast of the Puaco and we can see that the shrouds have been laid in place and the ratlins and once they've been completely trimmed off. The next step will be to touch them up as we can see has been completed right here. Here we can see an uncompleted side. So I'm going to take a little bit of black paint just as we would on a real ship we would be using tar and touching up the shrouds and the foot, foot ropes as you see done here. Okay here is one of the foot ropes laid in place on the lower main yard with the foremast. Next I'm going to attach the stirrups. There'll be three stirrups that are holding up each of the uh, two foot ropes on the left and the right hand side of this yard. Okay now here we're looking at the completed foremast of the foremasted Barkentine Puaco. We can see the six yard arms have been completed and we'll now have the sails sewn and attached to them and then the yard arms will be attached to the mast itself. Here we can see in place the foot ropes at the bottom of each one of the masts, the double pulley blocks on either side of the mast that will be used, one of them to cinch the sails down and Keep the sails tightened in place. And the other one is comes down from the yard arm above it and is used then to trim that yard and keep it in line with the other yard arms. We can also see the perils and the lines that uh, will be used to wrap them around the uh, mast at the when they're ready for being attached. The perils allowed the yard to slide up and down on the mast. Here I'm going to show how I make uh, sails for a tall ship model. And one of the best things that I suggest is to find a very lightweight material that you'll use for your sails rather than what you might find in kits. I think that, just, that kind of cloth is usually too thick, too heavy. What I use is an Egyptian cotton muslin uh, that's very thin but has a very high thread count so it replicates real canvas quite accurately. Now what I do is I take a line of heavy cordage and after waxing it then I'll take and lay uh, a strip of that cordage onto the cotton muslin and then add a bead of clear cryocyanatic glue until it's glued in place like here and then I can take my scissors and trim along the edge 
cut away this piece of sail and then I'll glue another piece of that cordage on the opposite side of the sail so it's reinforced and actually it's exactly how sails were made 100, 200, 300 years ago. Alright, so now in this example we're lacing up the sail onto one of the yard arms. The yard arms have been uh, stained with three or four coats of Danish tea oil and had their foot ropes and appropriate block and tackle already added to them. And then the sail cloth was prepared separately, cut to the right size and, and trimmed with uh, reinforcing rope cordage. And now the sails are being laced onto the yard arms. And then there'll be some block and tackle added to the corners of the sails. Just as would have been done. Now we're going to be taking a look at the sails and the mast of the four-masted Barkentine Kuoko, all ready for rigging. As we can see, the uh, sails have been completed by being cut from Egyptian cotton muslin. And then the edges have been reinforced with a heavy thread cordage. And then all the block and tackle has been added. In this case, on the top, on the very top yard arm of this sky sail foremast, six yards, we can see the single pulleys have been attached that will control the reefing of these sails. And then the sails have been lashed to the yard arm. And already the appropriate rigging lines have been rode through those blocks. So next, I know it looks like a big mess here, all this cord, all these lines now will be rigged. First each yard will be rigged around the mast. These are called perils, which are round wooden blocks that allow the yard arms to roll up and down in the mast. So first the perils will be attached and then all of the block and tackle yard lines will be run up through each one of the yards down along the mast. And it should be ready for installation on the ship. So here I'm attaching the completed sails to the uh, mast of the foremast of the Puaco and of course that's the down line here that's being strung through the hole that was drilled in the mast. Now that hole actually represents a uh, pulley that's embedded inside of this hole right here in the mast and that's what allows the uh, yard like this to be pulled up and down like that from the deck. On the other side the perils, the wooden perils, round wooden blocks or would allow this yard arm to easily roll up and down like that. And that of course again is controlled by this down line, the down hall right here. And this will be belayed, this line will be belayed down on the deck on one of the belaying pins. 